Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be covering the Usico 2019 Jan Contest Gold Problem called Sleepy Cow Sorting. So let's take a look at this problem. Farmer John is attempting to sort his n cows, where 1 is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to 10 to the 5, conveniently numbered 1 to n, before they head out to pastures for breakfast. Currently the cows are standing in some order, and Farmer John is standing in front of the first cow. He wants to reorder the cows so that they are in the order 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 n, with cow 1 next to Farmer John. So we know that they're going to be in some random permutation, and Farmer John is going to want to sort them and get them in sorted order. So today the cows are a bit sleepy, so the, only the cow paying attention to Farmer John can receive his instruction and try and sort themselves, which will be the first cow. So they give us an example here where Farmer John tells Cal 4 to move forward two paces, and Cal 4 does. So what's important to notice here is that when a cow moves forward, they move the cows that they pass over behind them. So, for example, when 4 moved in front of 2, 2 and 3 became um, went back a little. So we can use this to try and think of a way to solve the problem. So first, we want to be able to print out the number of instructions Farmer John has to give and what they are. So let's try to bound the number of instructions that Farmer John can give. Well, if he gives them an ideal amount of instructions, at most, these cows, the first n minus 1 cows, will sort themselves around this last cow. Now, this is actually a key to solving this problem. Because what we notice is that this last cow should never be given an instruction because ideally 4 will move to the place where it should be, 2 will move to the place it should be, and so will 1, such that that cow 3 will never have to move and it will be sorted. So in fact, what we can see is that we might it might not just be the first n minus 1 cows, but it can be a, a number of cows less than that because what happens is if we already have numbers that are in ascending order at the end and numbers that are not in the beginning. We know that 4 will move in between to where it needs to go and 2 will move where it needs to go and then will be sorted. So what we want to do is take the last amount of numbers that are in ascending order and ignore that because they will never have to move. So now all we're looking at is the first cows that are not in ascending order. And then we want to try and give them instructions to go into where they need to be. So one way we can try looking at this problem is approach from here and go left. So the rightmost point that's not in ascending order and go left from there. So we look at 2. When 2 is going to be given the chance to move, 4 will be in sorted order and this will read 1, 3, 4, 5. So 2 will essentially have to hop over the 1 and then go to its position. So 2 essentially has to hop over anybody to its left that's less than it, which in this case there aren't any because they'll be in sorted order, and 2 has to hop over the 1 to get to where it needs to be. Now this may sound confusing at first, but let's create a bigger test case so we can see what we can see the results that we want. So we know that we have to block off 2, 3, 5 so that they will remain in ascending order. So let's look at what will happen for the rest of the values. So we want to go from right to left, starting from here. So we start off at 6. Now when it's six turns, when it's six's turn to go, we know that everything else will be sorted. So 6 just has to jump over how many ever cows are less than it. So 6 will need to jump over 5 cows. What about 4? We know that for 4, everything will be in sorted order except for 6. So 4 will need to jump over the number of cows less than it, which is 3. And it'll also have to jump over the 6, which is greater than it. So that means cow 4 will have to jump over a total of 4 cows. How about cow 1? Well, cow 1, when everything except for the 4 and the 6 are going to be in sorted order, so cow 1 will have to jump over the number of cows less than it, which is 0, and also the number of cows to its 
that are not going to be in sorted order, which is four and six. So cow one will have to jump over two cows. And finally, seven. When it's cow seven's turn to go, cow seven will want to jump over to everything except for one, four, and six will be in sorted order. So it'll have to jump over the number of things less than it, which is six, plus the number of things to its right that are not in sorted order. However, we also want, we have overcounted one, four, and six because they are less than seven, but they're also to its right. So we subtract the number of cows to its right that are less than seven, and we get six, which is the correct value. So essentially what we need to do is somehow maintain these values in a sorted manner, such that we know, okay, if I'm looking at seven, how many cows to my right that I have seen, which is the one, four, and six, are less than me, and that's how much I subtract. So when we're looking at count n, we'll go n minus 1 plus the number of cows less than it. I'll denote that with a less than sign. Plus, or sorry, minus the number of cows that we overcounted. So since we need to support a very quick insertion, since as you remember, n is going to be... 10 to the 5, we can do all of this in a tree data structure. So let us look at an implementation of this code. So as you can see, I just set up the data reading. So we're going to get the permutation of the cows, and we're going to read them in. So what we first need to do is set up our tree data structure. So what we can do is create another class called node. And each node of, a, of the tree will have a left node and a right node, as in any binary tree. It'll have a number that it's representing. It'll, and this is to represent the number of cows smaller than it. We'll get to that later. And just for simplicity, we can create a constructor that we can easily initialize our class with. And set the num to equal that number. So now what we want to do is we want to create a root. So we create the root as such, node root. But we want to try and figure out what the root should be. So the root is going to be the cow that is to the left of the ascending order list that we have found. So we need to first make that ascending order list. So let's have a right index that is equal to n minus 1. And let us also have a min value that we're keeping track of. And this will allow us to store the value of when our ascending order thing is met. So actually, we initialize our right index to n minus 2 because since our min is always going to be the rightmost one, we can start from the one to the left of the rightmost one. So we do while cows of the right index is less than min. So while we can while we're gonna make an ascending order list, min equals cows of rind, set the new minimum, decrement rind, and we also want just so we can know when to stop running our code, let's have an integer called num sorted, which is how many cows we've sorted up until this point, and we increment num sorted as such. So now what we can do is we can create our root because our root will be equal to the node whose number is the cow who is we have just passed. So since we have added this to our root, what we want to do is we want to increase our num sorted. We want to decrease our right index. And we also want to, we now want to start iterating through all of the other values. So what we can do is while num sorted is less than n, while the number of cows that we put into sorting order is less than the number of cows that we have. So what we want to do now is we want to create an insert function. So this is where we insert a 
value to our tree. And in fact, we can make this return the number of cows to the right that are less than it, because that's what we need to figure out the answer. So we need the root that we have, and we need the node that we are inserting. So now what we do is we try to figure out where this node that we're inserting should go. And thankfully, there are no repetitions because all of the numbers are distinct in a in this tree because it's all permutations. So we check if the left node is equal to null, then that means then that's where we should put the inserted node into. And we can what we want to return is the number of things to the right of you that are less than you. So so we do this by storing how many children a node has. So this is done through the use of this, where if we go to the left of a node, that means we're smaller than the node and we're going to become one of its left children. So it should increase its value. Otherwise, we're going to the right and we don't care about anything that's not less than us. So we want to return a value. So let's just create a static in count. And we return count over here. So if we go to the left of a node, we make the node that we went to the left to increase by one because we became one of its children. But what if we're going to the right of a node? Well, that means all of its children are smaller than us because we are greater than it. So what we can do is add to count whatever their children were, which is node.small. And then we need to add them because they are a part of their own node. So now we also want to be able to insert by doing the same method as before, except with the right node. So this is our insert program. It's actually quite simple. And we also need a, one last part where if we did not find it, then we return insert with node.rins. And over here, if we did not, if we still have more that we need to traverse, we return insert of node.l ins. Uh, sorry, that should be here. And this is our insert code. Now, why is this useful? Well, we need to store essentially how many cows that we have passed using our equation that we derived over here, where we do n minus 1 plus the number less than us minus the number that we overcounted. And what this function does is it returns us the number that we overcounted while inserting it into our tree. So that's exactly what we want. Now, what we also have to do is store what our rightmost index was, you know, so we know how many guys are to the left of the ascending order list that we created. So what we want to do is before we insert it into the node, before we change our root and decrement right, right index, we want some best val, before value is what I call it, to be equal to right index. And this will help in the future. So now what we want to run is we want to figure out int num equals insert of root. And then we'll be inserting the node with cows of right index, the new cow that we are looking at. And this will return us the number that we overcounted. But remember, the number that we overcounted isn't enough. We also want to create a store variable where we do this formula that we plugged in over here, where we do uh, the number of things in here minus 1 plus the number of things that are less than me minus the number that we overcounted. And that's going to be equal to bethval minus right index. This is going to be n minus 1. We also, sorry, bethval minus right index plus the cows of Rhine minus 1. This is going to be 
the number less than us, and now that the number that we overcounted will just be minus num, which is what our program was supposed to return. And then after this, we'll want to set our count equal to zero, so it's reset for the next insertion. We want to decrement our write index, and we want to increase num sorted. Now, with this store value, we also want to save it somewhere. So let's create some array list of integers that we can store all the, the order of instructions that we need to give. So the first thing that we add to our array list is the root because, and the root will just be whatever is one minus cows of rind. And this is because as we saw before, when we're trying to add six in, it has to jump over everything less than it because everything else will be in sorted order. So after that, we want to add store. So al.add store to our array list. Finally, we want to print out the answer that we got. So we want to print out the size of the array list, which is the instructions that we give. And then we want to go from back to front because we did a little right to left approach and print out, we want to print out the instructions. Let's try running our code. So I'll copy paste the test case. And as you can see, we printed the right value. Um, regard not adding the spaces. So let's add all of this into our print writer. And don't forget to close the print writer. Also, first, the grading server doesn't want any sp spaces at the end of the thing. So we want to make sure that when we're printing the final instruction, we print it without the space. Otherwise, we print it with the space. So let us try submitting this onto the Usico grading server and see what happens. And as you can see, it ran on all 15 test cases and got all credit.